Hello, welcome to my bookshelf, and today I will be doing my first ever Top 5 Wednesday. And I thought that this week would be a perfect week to start, considering it's all about your Hogwarts house. As you can see, I am a Ravenclaw. And this week's list is all about the top 5 books that best represent your Hogwarts house. So, let's get started. So, the first book that I thought would be pretty appropriate for Ravenclaw is Good Job Brain. So if you're not aware, Good Job Brain is also a podcast and it was put together by our four podcasters. We got Karen Chu, Colin Felton, Dana Nelson, and Chris Kohler. And they are fantastic. They are actually all a part of a pub trivia team, which is why they started a trivia podcast in the first place. They love trivia and they love having fun and they wanted to interact with other people and with other trivia nerds and it is just a fantastic podcast it is so funny and also very educational it's just wonderful and this is basically a book version of that it's written by the podcasters and they each write their own section and they each come up with puzzles and trivia and like little quizzes and it's just overall a really fun book and I just I just love it you can tell that the podcasters did it themselves it feels exactly like the podcast itself so it's a lot of fun and why I picked it for this list is because obviously it's all about trivia and you know women class you know we love knowledge and trivia and also just having fun and that was an important thing for me I hate the stereotype that smart people are boring or don't know how to have fun because that is not true us Ravenclaws have plenty of fun and good job brain is just one of many instances of smart people being fun as well alright so the next book that I chose to represent Ravenclaw is Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. This is a short story collection and I chose it because all these short stories talk about really interesting, unique topics and it's done in a very intelligent, smart way, but I also think it's done in a very engaging way. Like I think it's easy to read and it definitely keeps your attention the entire way through. Which again, are, I think are all things that a Ravenclaw would appreciate in a book, especially in a short story collection where you get to delve into so many different topics. And I love that each short story in here talks about something completely different than the other things. I think it really just does a good job of exploring each of these topics. I mean, obviously because they're short stories, they don't completely delve into them, but I do think you get a pretty good introduction into the idea and kind of the implications of the situation and I just think it's done really well and I personally love it and I think that other Ravenclaws would enjoy it as well. I definitely think that Ravenclaws would be good storytellers. I mean, we have this love of knowledge and I think also just like a love of life. The whole point of knowing things is to become a better person, at least for me. I mean, I don't really see the point in like memorizing random facts if they don't help me in my own personal development. Maybe I can't directly use it, but hopefully just like learning about it has made me better in some way. So yeah, I just think these short stories are a lot of fun and they're very intellectual at the same time, which I think are both traits that represent Ravenclaw pretty well. Alright, so the next book that I think represents Ravenclaw is What Everybody is Saying by Joe Novero. Now Dr. Novero is an ex-FBI agent and this is his guide to speed reading people. Now this might seem like an odd choice, but bear with me. I do think that being able to read people, which is what this is all about, is about like analyzing people's like micro expressions to try to determine in this case if they're lying or not, but I do think that just the ability to be able to read people is super important as a human being. And, and why I say that is that being able to read people is one of those parts of emotional intelligence. Because not only is it about understanding and realizing what emotions you're feeling and going through, it's about being able to read other people and to kind of gather what kind of emotions that they're currently going through in order to be able to better communicate with them and not to make situations worse. So basically, emotional intelligence just helps you interact with other people better and, and also to kind of help yourself control your own emotions. And both of those things can be really hard to do, and if it doesn't come naturally for you, it is extremely challenging. I think emotional intelligence is one of those things that you take for granted if it's something that comes naturally to you, 
and it's so evident if it doesn't. But yeah, I think this book kind of at least hints on that idea of emotional intelligence. Obviously it's not all about that, but it still talks about being able to read people. And I do think that whether it's a part of emotional intelligence or not, I just, I think that it is a kind of like street smart intelligence, which is also super important. That's something that doesn't really come naturally to me, but is obviously its own kind of intelligence and also super important and something that I think Ravenclaws would appreciate. And I just want to mention that I love the fact that Ravenclaw isn't just one giant stereotype of smart people. There's different kinds of smart and there's different kinds of intelligence and knowledge and the love of learning that comes with that. And Luna Lovegood is a perfect example of this. She is nothing like what you might stereotypically picture a Ravenclaw to be, but she fits in Ravenclaw. She is a Ravenclaw. And I think a lot of people forget that. Ravenclaw is more than just being smart and doing well in school. There's so much more to intelligence than that, and there's way more to Ravenclaws than just that. And I love that Luna Lovegood is there to kind of remind us of that. Which is why I think that this book would be very interesting for Ravenclaws as well. Alright, so the next book that I thought would represent Ravenclaw pretty well is Zen Diagram by Wendy Brandt. Now this is a pretty obvious pick. Our main character is a self-proclaimed math nerd and she even tutors other classmates on math. And math and just school in general just comes naturally to her. She doesn't have to work that hard in order to just get it. It's just something she's just talented at and it's not something that she has to work as hard as other students. This is just one aspect of what, you know, Ravenclaws can be, but like I just said before, you know, Luna Lovegood kind of throws that in our face and shows us that there's a lot more to Ravenclaws than that, but I do think that Ravenclaws enjoy reading about someone who is okay in their skin, even if it is kind of a nerdy skin, um, because being the nerd isn't exactly cool in a lot of circles, and so I like that even though our main character is a nerd, she's not like pretending not to be. She realizes that it might not make her popular, but that's just who she is. So she's just going to be a nerd, she's going to tutor, whatever. And I really like that about her. And I think that she's definitely a Ravenclaw that I think that we can get behind. And so the last book that I thought would be fitting for Ravenclaw is Finding True Happiness by Dr. Robert Spitzer. Now, this is a very different book from the other books I have shown you. I try my best to make them pretty unique, but this is probably the most unique, I think. Um, this is basically a philosophy book, but it also tries to combine psychology and spiritual wisdom as well, so there's a lot of things going on here, but I just think that it's done really well. Because a lot of times, I hate to say it, philosophy is really interesting, but it can be extremely hard to understand and to get through. It's just so dense, like every single sentence has a very specific meaning and it can just be really confusing to really dissect what exactly is going on. <laughs> like I love philosophy, I took like three different philosophy classes in college and I absolutely love them, but it's not something that came easily to me. I really had to pay attention a lot in class to really fully understand the concepts that were being presented in the text that we were reading. And I like this one because it's a newer philosophy book and I think it's written in a way that's easier to grasp. And I also like that it talks about some philosophers that we talked about in Intro to Philosophy. And I, again, I, I think it's put together in an easier to understand way. I also like that he's taking from a lot of different disciplines to try to get to his point and try to understand happiness from a lot of different aspects. And I think that's really cool and definitely something that Ravenclaws would appreciate. And I also thought that this would be perfect because the one and only time we get to see the Ravenclaw common room, we find out that Ravenclaws have to answer a question to get into the common room. And the ones that we're presented with are pretty philosophical. So I think it's very safe to say that philosophy is something that they appreciate, which is why I had to include some kind of philosophy book on this list. All right, so those were my picks for this week's Top 5 Wednesday. This was a lot of fun. I'm hoping 
hoping to do more of these Top 5 Wednesdays. It was a lot of fun this week. Um, I can't promise I will be doing it every week, but I will definitely try to do the topics that really jump out to me. So if you're interested in doing your own Top 5 Wednesday video, you can check out the list of the topics on Goodreads. I will link to that in the description below, so go check that out. Alright, so let me know what you think of my Ravenclaw picks. I'll be very interested to see what you think. So thank you for watching this video, and until next time...